Um, and I think it's a trap that's very easy for people to fall into, that they worry about success in a sort of very generic, very sort of societal expectation fashion. So uh, I head up the Open Government Products team at GovTech and what we do is we proactively identify, prototype and evangelise ideas that we think uh, well, the government should be doing with regards to technology. We, uh, instead of waiting for a sort of policy initiative, we proactively experiment with all these small little apps and websites and tech solutions that we think could have a sort of good public impact. Um, examples of apps that we, uh, from us are Parking.sg, we built data.gov, as well as uh, Forms.sg. So Hong Yi, what were the difficulties faced during the journey of Parking.sg? The biggest difficulty was overcoming people's sort of apprehension about the simplicity of a digital system. Overcoming uh, essentially particular concerns about you know, failure modes, what, what if the server goes down, what if the app breaks, what if it doesn't, you know, what if this, what if that. Getting or like just testing this very rigorously. Um, because you know, even though it's small amounts of money, it is still people's money and it is still a government system. Which means that if you ever have a case where someone you know, pays, for a par pays for a parking lot, um, but their parking session doesn't go through and they get something, that's really bad. Uh, and so you need to have sort of systems, on, you need to design not just the core system, but as well as the sort of checking systems and audits, like sort of automated audit systems that run through and verify themselves uh, so that you have this thing that, very simple, but works super robustly. Um, and that, I guess, was the some more technical challenge of it. Yep, so Hong, what advice would you give to viewers who are stepping into the tech industry? The main thing would be to not be afraid to get your hands dirty and to learn things yourself. Um, so I was talking to a bunch of uh, startup founders and a lot of them, surprisingly, were not, like even founders of tech companies were not you know, traditionally techie themselves. They don't have a computer science degree, they don't study engineering. Um, but the biggest thing they'll tell you is that you, know, you, you just do everything. Um, if you, need to, if you need to do marketing, you do marketing. If you need to do sales, you do sales. And if you need to do programming, you do that too. Especially programming, uh, especially with regards to the tech sector. And myself, like when I was studying in school, even though I, I did study computer science, um, most of modern web development didn't exist. And app development definitely didn't exist. And iPads definitely didn't exist. And VR development definitely didn't exist. Um, and so uh, don't, don't stress out about whether or not you know the right thing or whether or not you've learned it in school or whether or not you are a, you know, a technical person. But focus on just being willing to get your hands dirty and learn the things you can learn. Yeah, so that would be my biggest bit of advice. All right, so can you share the happiest moments you have with your team? When sort of you see your team doing well, setting up, uh, setting up organizations, setting up, uh, getting a team to work together, is, uh, it takes a bit of time in trying to figure out all the systems and processes and culture that you want to establish. Seeing your team uh, work autonomously and like making the right decisions and making calls, especially for the ones who just joined, like seeing them level up and be able to understand what they can do, I, I, that, that's... I think that's, pretty, that, that's a pretty happy moment for me. So what is your opinion for success and what do you think is an important factor for it? And so for me, I think the main principle of success isn't about like you know, achieving money or wealth or, or achieving wealth or fame or anything like that because quite frankly, it doesn't actually make you happier and it doesn't necessarily make others happier either. I think the things you do should make either yourself or others happier. Uh, and it seems almost tautological to say. Um, and I think it's a trap that's very easy for people to fall into, that they worry about success in a sort of very generic, very sort of societal expectation fashion, and they worry they're not hitting that expectation. Mm -hmm. But if you actually, but I think it's what's more important is you just boil down whether the things you do make yourselves or others happier. No one's asking you to go to be Mother Teresa and like, you know, sacrifice all your world leavings and, you know, go, go, go work in uh, third world countries helping, helping disaster areas and things like that. But at least on a day-to-day -day basis, if what you're doing isn't making yourself happier, you should be trying to at least consider, like you should, when it doesn't cost you too much and it has a good impact for, for, for the rest of the world, you should try to do those things. So uh, Hong, coming to an end, is there any quote that you would like to share with the viewers? Often in our lives, there's a lot of pressure to do the wrong thing. Um, and subtly wrong thing. 
individually they're no big deal. Individually, they are a small sacrifice of self-respect to you know, self-interest. Um, but these pile up um, on an individual basis for sure. Over time, you do more and more of these things, and you end up you know, realizing that you're doing work that doesn't actually help people and but harms them, and it adds up. And so, yeah, I think. You don't wake up one day a bad person. It happens through a thousand tiny sacrifices of self-respect or self-interest.